Let's take a look at flexible LED neon. This stuff is designed as a low voltage. Well, you get you actually get 240 volt versions, you get 120 volt versions, you get 24 volt versions, and this one is a 12 volt version. And the idea is that you can make quite complex shapes shapes with it because it it is very very flexible and it produces this lovely linear line. It's ultra smooth now. If you want actual neon, then the only thing that actually looks like actual neon is real neon. But this has some advantages. Primary advantages are that this is a lot cheaper. And you can actually make quite good detail with the low voltage stuff because you can cut it in very short sections. It's low voltage, which makes it relatively safe as long as you keep your current uh, levels in sensible levels. You know, you divide it across multiple uh, outputs in a power supply with suitable protection. And it's just very rugged. It is really, it's like, you, ca you can't do that with neon, otherwise it would break. The disadvantages compared to neon are it just lacks the perfect, solid, rigid look of neon. And also, a proper neon tube, properly made by a good neon bender, will last literally decades. This stuff is, I would regard this as a consumable, it's, it's a disposable material, particularly if you're on it at its full current, uh, quite often the LEDs will degrade quite quickly with time and you might end up losing sections of it. The construction is also different to me and it kind of limits its uh, sort of the shapeability. It's got a fairly rectangular section with a domed end and the LED is actually in the form of a tape down this end of it that runs in the sort of lower white section and it's firing sideways and the reason it's doing that is so you don't get a direct image of the LEDs, because if you did, you'd end up getting that characteristic spotty LED effect. You don't get that with this. You don't see that at all. It looks like a fairly linear stripe of light. It's very nice. So I've already stuck some of it on this metal star frame that was from an existing Christmas light, and I'm about to cut it into size. So I'm going to cut it to length. And one of the nice things about the DC 12 volt stuff is that you can cut it every 25 millimetres. That's pretty much every inch, which gives it a very good resolution as such. So I'm going to turn the power to it off. I'm going to decide that I want to cut this about here. I'm going to turn it over. The nearest one is there. So I'm going to take a sharp knife and place it on that line and press down and just slice through the material until it's cut off. And now hopefully I'm going to turn it on. That section will light up to the end, which it does, I can fit the loose end cap in the end and add the final cable tie to this that completes this neon star. And then we'll terminate this stuff and we'll even take some of it to bits to see what it's like inside. Ambient temperature of this material relative to ambient is about uh, 14 degrees Celsius above ambient, so it runs very cool. They say you can run quite a length off one end cap, but I would say once you see the construction, you'll see that's kind of viable, but to keep things under control, I'd recommend keeping it sort of shortish, just a few metres uh, sort of per 12 volt supply. So that's the star complete. So let's uh, crop that off. Things worthy of note about the termination. The termination is this end cap that pushes on, and you've got a set of spikes that go into the end. This is very common for this type of linear LED stuff. You've got little bus bars in there, and you push these spikes into those bus bars, and then, in this case of this material, the positive goes to the back, and the negative goes up to the front of the diffused area. So, in this case, we've got a brown for a positive, because this, this will also be used for the 240-volt version, this set of lead, uh, but with a rectifier. And the blue will be the negative, so if you kind of squish it on like that, that connects and the star lights. It looks very good. Let's get this out the way because we want to actually play about the other bit now. We want to slit it open and take a look inside. Power consumption is approximately 640 milliamps per meter. Uh, if that's if you run it at the full 12 volts, if you nudge it down by a tiny percentage, um, it will reduce the intensity noticeably, but it will last a lot longer. Not that it's really pushing these. Each LED in it is running at approximately 16 milliamps. So if we look at an end profile, and I can show you this. I can show you an end profile because I took a picture of it earlier. You'll see that there's a plastic channel in this, and this channel is exactly the same type of channel. Let me find a bit here. As is used, huge mess of LED tape. 
exactly the same channel that is used in this sort of mains voltage LED tape and I guess the low voltage versions of this. It's got the bus bars running along it, but except in this case, this version has the LED tape laid into the channel in here, but then it's extruded with just a clear coating so you actually view the LEDs directly. It's for intensity more than anything else. I'll just put this out the way. It's just everywhere now. It's quite a long, it's quite a long length. So this basically, this channel in here has the LEDs running along it, and then they've got a continuous strip and they keep tapping on at regular points. I initially thought it would tap on for every single inch, but because ultimately, I suppose, you're never going to really use. Well, unlike me, I did actually cut an inch off and it didn't work. <laughs> it's kind of hit and miss. Uh, you're very, un very unlikely to use a single inch, but if you did, you can work that out. Uh, the connections are every 50 millimetres. You can actually see a slight ripple on the side of the plastic. I don't know if you are you seeing that? Yeah, there's a ripple, there's a ripple, there's a ripple. Those are the connections into the inner arrangement, the inner uh, circuit board. So the circuit board, the LEDs, let's do doodle this out. It's going to be clearer. Notepad. And I'll just focus down onto that. So if you can imagine, here is the profile of the LED in the middle. So it's got this rectangular section that folds round like this and then in. I'm just trying to think, where is that picture there? Uh, then it goes up and sort of goes round like this. It's got a strange ripple on the front in the plastic. I don't know if that's just to disperse light uh, sideways. The other end is open. It goes down like that, like that. And likewise, it's got that sort of channel. And in here is built the bus bar. It's actually extruded into this uh, molding. And so that's a stranded bus bar. Not sure what the metal is. I don't think it's copper because previous ones I've looked at, it may have been aluminium or steel. It's just, it's not, it didn't come across as copper. Goodness knows how they do this. That's where they've actually connected into this channel. They've cut, they've taken, you can see they've sliced along that to expose the uh, m internal bus bar. And then they've wrapped a wire around. It's not sorted, it's physically wrapped, but they've got one, two, they've actually wrapped it around twice and tucked it in. So I don't know if that's done manually. What's, what would they use to actually wrap that? Maybe they've got a little gun that automatically, as you squeeze it, it just like wraps it in some way. I don't know. Is this a very manual thing? Don't know. Uh, here's the, a clue to the, the circuitry. The, the LED tape is typical LED tape. It's got the three LEDs. Each is about three volts each. So if I bring the calculator in, and we say three times three volts, three times three volts is the nine volts. Nine volts, uh, 12 minus nine volts equals three volts to drop across the LED. Uh, so that's divided by, in this uh, resistor, should I say, so... We've got a 181 resistor, which is 18 and 10, the, the last digit is multiplier. So that's 3 divided by 180 ohms equals the 16 milliamps that I'm actually getting through the LEDs. So that circuit board material, the circuit board is laid in like this, and it's got the LEDs protruding like this, and they're shining light out sideways. There are pads uh, at intermediate points. They've got the main uh, cut points that if this was just normal LED tape being used because this is a universal material you'd just solder onto those pads but in this case they've used these pads here in the sort of midpoint of it along the bus bars so they get the wire and they, it comes out and it goes and it twists around that and the, likewise there's another one on the other side that comes around and twists around that this thing this stuff must be quite complex to make it's not cheap that's possibly why other things where they've not see this sort of white at the bottom here, there is a sort of reflective coating, a white coating put on here. And that also has the black markings on it. If you look at the bottom of that channel, you can see the marking every time it's at the, the cut point. And that shows through the bottom of this, that is if that line there with the dots is effectively the bottom of that channel. The material then has the outer shell, which comes up like that and then flares out to go into that sort of curved front that uh, emits all the light, the sort of the neon effect. And at the side, he said, smearing the ink, 
you've got a reflective white material that comes down. And the point of that is that it's to uh, reflect the light in from the lower area. It basically acts as a light guide for the, the LED and it channels it up to the top where it comes out. So let's uh, put that white coating in there. So in operation, you can't see the LEDs directly because they're actually shining out onto this surface here. But it bounces off that surface and it's a diffused material. It has that appearance of silicon sealant. So the light diffuses out and ultimately it ends up spreading out into here. But because you're not viewing the LEDs directly, it gives it that just that linear glow around the whole thing. I really don't think it is efficient, but it still it produces a very good visual effect. And that's ultimately all they're looking for. I've seen this stuff in shop windows where they've spent a lot of time making the signs. The signs are sort of temporary display signs in shop window displays. And what they've done is they've got a plastic... Uh, frame that's designed purely to take this material and then someone has terminated it in great detail they've not used one of those big huge connectors on to end and this is something we'll also experiment with but they've terminated on with a little bit of sleeving and they've got short sections make it all up so you get curves of letters but then you've got sh little bits uh, tacked in where need it needs to be it's not like neon where it has to be one continuous run and that's the advantage of the low voltage you can cut it down in size so now I've explained how it works. Let's open some. Oh, there's something I want to show you. This. This is very smart. I don't know who sent this. The message that came with it said, Hi Clive, I hope you don't mind, but I borrowed the avatar from your YouTube channel as the basis for a small drinks coaster project to help with teaching myself 3D design and printing. Good job. I couldn't decide what to do with the lens of the glasses, but I felt that leaving them recessed gave an unusual look. It does. And as I wasn't sure if you'd be okay with this, I'm completely fine with that. So I've sent you the only one. I'm absolutely fine with this, and I've also included some of my earlier sizing test prints so you can see how it goes together. Oh, and apologies, the colours, they're all I have at the moment. The colours are actually really nice. I like that. Best regards, mystery person. I do not know who sent this, but what I would say is, it looks great. It's actually, it's... Two layers that clip together. There was another one which I've kind of misplaced now. It's somewhere here. Yeah, it's it's there it is. Two layers that physically clip together and uh, make up the finished sort of effect. It looks great. So whoever did this, uh, it'd be great if you could put that in Thingiverse, then other people could print these off as well if they want a, a bigclive.com official coaster. Because uh, it's certainly, it's, it's nice. It's very nice. I wonder how... Uh, I think that must have been polished down afterwards, not sure. And let me know who you are in the comments because uh, I do appreciate that. It's great, thank you. So let's look at how you'd connect onto this. And as I've done before, I've found that you can make a very compact connector by getting the little three pin Molexi type connectors like this. Uh, let me just zoom down onto this so you can see what I'm talking about here. It's a little three pin circuit board Molexi type connector. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm going to just cut out one side like that, the little tab. He said, not quite cutting it enough. And I'm going to drag one of the pins out, the middle pin. Let's not get my fingers cut between the pliers. They usually pull out quite easily. If they don't come out too easily, heat them up the solder iron and then they pop out, just like they do when you're trying to solder the connectors in the first place. Take the uh, ribbon and you'll see the uh, little bus bars in there and aim for those bus bars. This is where it all goes horribly wrong, but I don't care. Stuff goes wrong. It's like tomorrow's world, it's all live. And push those pins up those connectors. And theoretically, if everything has worked, has it worked, do you think it's worked? Positive at the bottom, negative at the top. We have a fairly solid connection if you soldered the wires on. Uh, that, was that even in shot? Okay. Did I did I show that in shot? I'm not sure if it was in shot or not. But, but the gist is that I've just pushed that connector up the end of those two little bus bars. The uh, oh, here's another picture that kind of shows that the uh, two little bus bars here. So now now that I've done that, let's cut a chunk off and slice it open with a very very sharp knife. So let's um, use this and I'll just cut a bit off like that. And the best way to cut this is with a very sharp knife. And I'm going to slit it open. This is where I hurt myself, but you know what? Hi. 
nothing new, eh? Not on this channel. It's just like real work. If you cut it like this, you can usually peel the bits apart because that inner one is basically an extrusion that's been it's been extruded into the uh, outer casing. This is where it all doesn't work, but I'll try. Let's get the knife out of the way before I hurt myself with it. So I've slit that, let's peel that off and see if I can peel it off the other way. It's quite stiff, but I'm going to persist. I've actually cut too deep, I've gone right into the inner channel as well. Ah, I want to peel this back so you can see what it really is like inside. I may even just slip that completely off. Let's try and slip that completely off, he said, running the knife dangerously close to his fingers again. Here is the LED tape inside. Let's zoom down in that, and this time I will try and stay in shot. So there's the LED tape shining sideways inside through that ripply surface. On the back, let's uh, see if we can just take a wee slice off there. Ah, the pleasure of a nice, sharp new knife blade. Let's uh, see if I can prise that off and delaminate it. There it goes, it's delaminating. And now what we can see is... I'm going to zoom up a bit more, this is where it could actually... You know, let's zoom out here, bring it up and focus on that. And then we can really zoom in. So you can see where they've actually... There's the white liner on the bottom of that uh, strip there. And then there's the bus bar that they've shimmied in. They've actually sort of uh, wrapped the wire around it. Let's uh, refocus on that because I keep changing the height, don't I? And the other side, they've also uh, shimmied in and uh, ra wrapped the wire around that before uh, putting it all together and moulding it into this. So let's um, just zoom back down and see if we can get that tape out completely. The advantage of having the tape loose like that... Oh, the actual blacks! Oh, the black is in the tape. They've put the black in the tape. Are they detecting that in some way? And having a system that then transfers onto that? Or this? You know what? Oh, that looks almost like it's been done by hand. If this has been pointing in the way, has someone actually just gone the full length of that with a sharpie, basically? I'm thinking this is very manual. So uh, that's ultimately it. It is LED tape inside a diffused medium. It's fairly standard looking thin LED tape. Uh, and now I'm going to look, at, whenever I've got other tape, I'm going to look for those wee extra pads that might be used for other applications like this. And yeah, that's fundamentally it. That's the LED tape just firing sideways so you don't see the pins, the pinpoints, and uh, then it just comes through on the front on that diffused material. It's very good. And that, as I say, that loose tape means that you can flex it within reason. If you flex it too much, there is a risk you're going to actually crack LEDs off the circuit board. But, you know, it does handle fairly tight shapes like this. Let's see if I can uh, get that lit. So you can basically really squish in tight shapes, but they do, they do recommend a sort of minimum radius to actually avoid damaging it. But it's impressive. It's very good stuff, and it's not too expensive. I shall provide a link to where I bought this from in the description below, and you can maybe use that if it's uh, if the price rockets up. You can then maybe use other keywords uh, from that to actually find other sellers on eBay.